Hi, I'm Matt, and welcome to the Qualcomm Flight RB5 Quick Start. In this guide, I'll help you get your RB5 from the box to the air. Before getting started, make sure to remove the props. For safety, the props should always be removed whenever you work on the drone. The first step in the setup is to slide a 4S battery into the drone's chassis, making sure it sits firm against the foam insert. Then, connect the two XT60 connectors together. Next, grab a USB Type-C cable and plug it into the drone as demonstrated now. Then plug the other end into the PC you'll be using for the software setup. Here we are on Ubuntu 18.4.5. To access your RB5's Ubuntu OS, open the terminal and type in ADB shell. We recommend opening up ifconfig to double check your connections. Then you want to edit your WPA supplicant configuration file by typing in what's shown on screen now using the terminal text editor. Go ahead and put your network's SSID where it says uh, your SSID right here and go ahead and put in the password as well down there. Once you've got those two done, type in WQ to save and exit. Then go ahead and type exit and reboot the drone via the terminal, or you can also power cycle the drone as I'll demonstrate now. To connect with 5G, you'll need to install a SIM card into your RB5. To do so first, start by disconnecting the battery. Using a Phillips head screwdriver, unscrew the two screws holding in the flight deck lid. Then, Remove the screws holding in the chirp sensor. You may have to hold the bolts with your finger while you unscrew them from the other side. The SIM card slot is located right under the top PCB. Using forceps, gently slide the SIM into the slot and go ahead and push it in until you hear the click. If you ever want to swap your SIM, just push on it and it'll pop right out. Next, screw the flight deck lid back on the same way you took it off, making sure to put the chirp sensor back in place, and then plug in a battery, power the drone on, and plug in via a USB Type-C cable. Once your RB5 is powered on and plugged in, open up the ADB shell and type in rb5-modem-configure to open up the modem configuring utility. It'll ask you which modem you're using. If you're not sure, put in 1 for QuickTel, and then it'll ask you to select your APN. If you're not sure about your APN, make sure to double check with your carrier. The utility will start the RB5 modem service, and then if you type in I have config, you should see a new wireless wide area network pop up. You can double check that everything's working properly by pinging a wireless server, such as modelai.com. In order to use 5G, you'll need to set up a VPN server and connect your drone and your ground station to it. For some more information on how to do this, check out our documentation at docs.modelai.com. Before continuing, make sure to power cycle your RB5. If the drone is properly connected to Wi-Fi or 5G, it'll boot up and automatically connect to PX4. If it properly does so, the blue ESC lights will come on as shown now. If PX4 is running and both devices are connected to the network, then your RB5 should automatically detect and connect to the host PC running QGC. All RB5s are calibrated from the factory, but if QGC asks you to calibrate, go ahead and do so now. After calibrations, power down the drone for spectrum binding. Every RB5 comes with a spectrum receiver, which is used in the binding process. For this process, make sure to leave the bind plug inserted. Grab the 5V outline from the side of your RB5 and plug it into one of the open ports on the receiver. Then, plug the line from the receiver into the spectrum satellite at the bottom of your RB5. 
Go ahead and unplug the line that's there and replace it with the one from the spectrum transmitter for the bind. Then go ahead and plug the battery back in and you should see that the receiver will blink and the satellite under the RB5 will blink orange as well. Then just do a regular spectrum bind. Binding. DSMX 22 milliseconds. Bind complete. Once the bind completes, go ahead and unplug the battery from the drone and disconnect the 5 volt line from the receiver. Then, disconnect the receiver from the Spectrum satellite and plug the original cable assembly back in. Then go ahead and power the drone back on and you should see the orange light on the Spectrum satellite be solid this time. If for any reason the bind doesn't work, just go ahead and repeat the process again. The last step is to confirm your RC settings. Every user is going to want to have different flight modes depending on the transmitter that they're using and the different switch assignments that they want, but this is the general kind of config that we recommend to start off with. Before flying, make sure to recalibrate your RB5's compass. As always, before every flight, make sure to conduct a thorough safety check and look over of your RB5. Make sure that nothing is loose in regards to all the parts. Make sure the arms aren't loose. Make sure the motor bolts aren't loose. Make sure the legs are secure. Check any cabling. Make sure no cabling is loose or disconnected or damaged. Make sure the receiver is fully connected. Make sure your ESC connection is secure. You also want to make sure that the flight deck dampeners are secure. You can check by giving them a very light wiggle and you just want to generally make sure that they're secure and that they haven't popped out. At this point, you can put the battery in if you'd like, but do not plug it in. The next step is to install the propellers. As you will see, they are color coded. Two of the propellers and motors are colored silver, whereas the other two are colored black. Go ahead and thread the propellers on, making sure to hold them tight and really make sure that it's really snug. About as hard as you can get it on there is good. And with that, you're ready to fly your RB5 flight. Safety should be your number one priority. Before flying, we recommend you review our safety tips on our blog page linked below. We recommend that your first flight should be in manual mode, so that you can get a sense of your RB5's flying characteristics and so you can make sure everything works properly before using VIO and VOA. To stream VIO data from your RB5, first establish an SSH connection to it. The password is oelinux123. Once the connection is established and once your RB5 is in its takeoff position, Use the command shown on screen to restart the QVIO server, then use rb5-qvio-client to stream the VIO data. The first three numbers represent your drone's XYZ position in meters from your starting position, then the next three are your drone's roll, pitch, and yaw in degrees, and the, the last is a status indicator for the VIO server. To stream VOA data from your RB5, first establish an SSH connection to it as you did for VIO. Then use rb5-voa-client to open the obstacle map. The obstacle map shows the distance in meters of obstacles around the drone. In this case, the top and bottom rows represent the depth in 5 degree intervals of the front and back 55 degrees of your rb5's view. In this particular config, the left and right values are set to zero as obstacle avoidance is disabled for those sides. The detected distances will be between 1 and 8 meters, and any distance outside of that range will display zero. I hope this was helpful. If you have any more questions, check out our documentation at docs.modelai.com.